Okay, so I'm going to explain how this app works. Um, as you can see, the notifications are showing up even before we log into the app. So that's one of the items on the task list that we show these things after you actually log in. But this is the requirement so that uh, we get notifications. <clears throat> There's also another pop-up that actually shows up about location um, and having the settings set to always for location services. So that also has to be moved towards after you log in, okay? <clears throat> so I will do the login. So we do this to make sure people always choose on always. If you click on something else, it won't let you move forward. So you have to click all, um, any one of these, open up the phone settings. Here's the tutorials. <coughs> so this is our old design. And we actually have a new design, which I showed you, I think I showed you. So we'll have to modify these based on that. <clears throat> okay. So the main menu, you get this broadcast location. If you turn it off, nobody can see your location. <clears throat> so if you want to kind of be anonymous and not have anybody tracking you, you just turn that off. Tracking is where you go for all the tracking related issues. <clears throat> so if you want to track somebody, there's there's two different types of tracking, which I'll show you. One is tracking where you get route history, the paid version. So if you click this tracking, you will actually get a pop-up notification asking you to subscribe. <clears throat> so right now you don't have that, but that has to be implemented. But this is where you get, you can set up arrival, departure notifications, um, where you can see that route, someone's route history, um, all of those things, and you can set up everything on here. That's tracking where on the map you will see the user moving, their speed of travel, direction of travel, and you'll see them exactly on the map as they're moving. So that's tracking. <clears throat> chat is pretty simple. You can, you can chat with people. Um, the green light actually means that the user is on the application right now. <clears throat> Drop a pin is functionality where um, you can drop a pin someplace on a map like right now it's showing the ocean but you can drop a map someplace a drop a pin someplace by just clicking on the current location and it'll, it will drop a it'll drop a pin or um, it will if you just put your um, thumb down somewhere it'll drop a pin there so it's showing South Atlantic Ocean. It shouldn't. It should show your location, actually. So we got to fix that. But this functionality pretty much works. They're just UI issues. So as you can see, the satellite and map view at the bottom are getting covered up a lot of times. And we just have to have this centered more towards where the user is. Um, so that's what drop a pin is. Uh, we have privacy settings. <clears throat> so this allows you to hide your photo, your profile photo from people you don't know. Uh, you can go invisible, meaning you don't want anybody to see you at all. You can go invisible or you can go invisible to certain people. Like you just don't want, you know, your friend, certain friends. So you can just swipe left on their profile page and or swipe left on this page. I'll show you and you can go invisible to them. You can block users, delete users, and you can offset your location up to 4,000 feet. Now you can't, this only works for strangers. It does not work for people you already know that you are your connections, okay? Um, we have groups and events functionality. So a group is basically, you create a group <coughs> where you say, you know, like all five of us are gonna, you know, go out to this location and you follow around that group for the beginning to the start time and the end time. So that group, you'll be able to see everybody's location during this time frame. And so on the main screens, which I'll show you, 
which are this map view, radar view, and list view, you will be able to easily find all members of your group and look at their location. So we have also events functionality. <coughs> That's where, let's say you have five people meeting at lunch and you can create an event here and then track everyone's location and get notifications when they arrive at that location or when they leave. You get notifications within two hours before and after of their arrival and departure for everyone that, that goes to the event. After that time, it stops. Just like with groups, it has an end date. After that time, it stops. So unless you are connected to them as a connection, then only can you see their, uh, their location. But if there are people, members of a group that you're not connected to, then you can't after that time frame. Then we have the contacts. <clears throat> so these are all the people that are my contacts. The, you can, what we were supposed to do is import the contacts. <clears throat> so I'm supposed to import your phone contacts into here and then show you by putting the serendipity, this icon, right next to where the user is that's already on the application. So if your contacts from your phone are already on serendipity, it shows by showing that, um, that icon. <clears throat> and the other ones you can invite. Now, we have a whole onboarding flow for when you import connections that if any of your connections are on serendipity, we ask you to connect with them on that screen, onboarding screen. So you invite them and then they will be um, your contacts, right? Now we're also importing all of your connections. So if someone later on joins serendipity, then what happens is we look and see that we imported that number as a contact of yours. So then what we do is we alert you and say, hey, your contact that you imported so-and-so name just joined serendipity. Would you like to connect with them? This way we get more and more people doing connections, right? So we have to get that thing working. Okay, so that's what contacts are. <clears throat> so contacts are just the people you've imported, um, not necessarily all of your connections. So if you go to connections on serendipity, these are all the people that you've connected with. So you basically, you know, do a friend request, you type in their name or whatever, it shows up, and then you can add them as a friend, okay? This is where you do that. See, so you click the plus icon, and that's how you add them as a friend. Okay, and then they get a connection request. They get a push notification saying, you know, Sunil has asked, you know, you to be a friend, and then you get connected that way. So you have to agree to it. Once you're connected, you both get to see each other's location uh, in real time, but you'll just be able to see them on a map. Okay. Uh, then you have <coughs> right here is the you can import um, this is the you use that icon that circular icon over here for um, importing contacts the little eye icon next to connections and serendipity is to show all the users that um, that are uh, hidden see this is a hidden user so that's what that shows now there's battery usage you can see in real time Right now it's on travel mode. So if I switch this to nine feet, you'll see my update every nine feet. It's on medium, it's 25 feet. Low is 150 and very low is 500 feet. Then if you go to travel mode, we're using the built-in logic of TransistorSoft to show ground. That means the faster you go, the less updates it gives to save on battery drain. Um, and the slower you go, it gives more updates. And then air just updates the location data every 15 minutes. So if you're flying in the air, it'll catch when you get to a terminal or you make a change somewhere, it'll get all of that, but it won't uh, drain your battery when you're in travel mode. Then we have share with friends. This is just a way of you know sharing the application with others. You know, um, Then we have a tutorial section, which we have to implement which basically lets people understand how to use all the different different sections in this menu area. Um, so, you know, it has all the sections and then you can go through the tutorials, you know. So, uh, then we have account settings. This is for chat notification settings. So right here, <coughs> we have all these notification settings here. So these are getting notified when people you know are near you. 
okay? So you can set like a first degree, second degree, or third degree connection when they're within this mile radius. Or you can get notified if any of your connections are within, let's say, a 200 mile radius. Or if your connections of connections, that means people you know and their friends, okay, are within a certain mile radius. And f your favorite connections. And I'll show you how to show favorites. Now, there's another thing we have to add in here also, which is, um, which is um, uh, managing the push notifications that you get. So I sent a sheet, a document that explains the push notifications we need to implement and how users can control that from here. So intelligent alerts, you know, sometimes you want to get notified when people you know are within your same, like within a five mile radius, but somebody may go to work at the same time every day and you don't want to get that same notification that your friend is coming and going all the time. So intelligent alerts, if you turn that on, it should stop that. It should, if you get three notification, the repetitive alert from the same person, you know, like two or three times, then we need to stop and not give those notifications anymore because they're just repetitive. Uh, then there is open to dating. This is just a yes or a no. So it shows on your profile page. There is a measurement system. You can choose from Imperial and metric. So it changes all the data from miles to kilometers. Uh, you can change your phone number on here so that it goes through a whole process of changing the phone number. Uh, it has a contact us so that it, you, know, you can contact us on the, the company on the back end and then you can log out. Now let me just show you the core features of the application. So this is the main screen. This is, there's three main screens, radar view, map view, and list view. So this is the map view, and you can do either satellite or map view, and you can zoom in on the location like this. <clears throat> so this is, this is it. This is my location. This is Jane's location, my wife. So you can see this is your location, and you can see the compass. The compass, as you turn your phone to the right, it moves. So it should show exactly on the compass where the user is in comparison to your phone. Okay, so that's how that works. The compass moves as you move your phone. Like if you move it around in a circle, you will see it moving. When you click on the compass, it goes straight to the user's location and you click on it and you can see the full address here. See this? And you can change the satellite or map view. Now, Every view at the top has connections, community, track users, and groups. So every view has every one of these. So, so right now I'll just show you, this is map view, this is radar view, and this is list view. Okay, when you swipe left on list view, you can go invisible, you can click someone and go invisible, you can click someone to favorite them or unfavorite them, or you can go straight to chat, okay? just by doing that. So Jane is a favorite, so that's why she has the heart icon over here. If I put it, make Daniel a favorite, you can see the favorite is there added there. So if you go over here, if I go to favorites, then these are all the people that are in my favorites. So I can filter the views to just see people on the radar view or map view that are my favorites, okay? and this shows where they are. Now you have all connections. All connections is everyone that's in this list, okay? That's all connections. But what you do have is also active connections. Active connections are those users who have had an update in the last 24 hours that we have registered a location update. Those are active users. The ones that are not active, um, it will show Actually, um, there's an icon that's missing at the top here, but it will show like how, when the last location update was for them. And then their icons go gray, okay? Because they're like outdated, you know? They're not, uh, they're not, they're not uh, updated. Now, around the user, um, the battery, if you look at the battery settings on the map, if you click this little, uh, the serendipity icon on the very right here, it opens up the update location frequency. So we have colors that represent, orange represents real time, green represents medium, 
uh, yellow is low and blue is very low. What this does is it represents how often we are, the location, the user has set their battery update location. So if you put it on very low, then what's gonna happen is that you're not gonna get real, you're not gonna get updates quickly. And you're gonna get updates every 500 feet. So when you look at someone's location, you'll be like, well, it's probably off by up to 500 feet because they, they set their battery setting to that. That's the reason why we have these different colors. But if you see it in, in the orange, that is means it's very accurate data. That means that person is within you know, nine feet of your location, okay? Now we are gonna add one more on here because we're using the transistor self plugin called prevent Sus with a feature called prevent suspend. And we're gonna add another feature because our battery drain right now is on real time is about 24% in a day, could be up to 30%. We need to reduce that dramatically. Um, and I'm thinking if we update the plugin, then it should work. But otherwise what we need to do is uh, modify the plugin to not to use the uh, uh, to not use prevent suspend and then our battery drain should go down to like 2% but the accuracy is going to be pretty off but we're going to let the user decide what they want to do okay so um, so I'll show you the different views uh, so let's go to map view and I'll take that off and you can see so we have all connections active connections and favorites so basically the, these are these are filters you know and this should all zero in on your home location of where your, your IP address is coming from. So if you're in the United States, it should center on this location. Uh, you know, it should be close to where you are like this is where it should start at. And people can zoom out to see everyone else. Um, now the community is, these are people that are second degree connections from you. Second degree or third degree. That means, um, so somehow this is still, this is a little buggy, but Second and third degree connections are people that should show up that like your friends of friends. So if I'm friends with someone and then, and they're a connection of mine, then their friend would be a second degree connection. So I can look around and see who are all the second degree connections, you know, near me. And you can see this two degree, you see all these things. So I, right here, it should only show two degree people right here. On this filter see and this will be only third degree so when I show you when I show you what this means this is the degree six degrees of separation they say there are six degrees of separation between you and any person in the world so we have this on the profile page so if you just go to six degrees you can see it shows these are the ways that we're connected so me and her we are connected through this guy, Eunice, Eunice knows Rahul, Rahul knows Ronda Rousey, okay? If you click this little thing on the bottom right, it kind of resets everything. So I'll show you another use case for someone else. So I'll go to list view, my connections. So let me go to Brad. So these are all my connections with Brad. I have all these people then know these other people. So something is wrong because Jane shouldn't know Jane on the second one. Should just be one time. But like, I know this guy Rishi. Rishi knows Steve. Steve knows Raj. Raj knows Brad. So if I just do this, it shows the, the way that everybody knows around. You see this? This is the five degrees. And by clicking on any person in here, it will change the way this whole thing works. You see this? So I can see even the four degree connection. So all of these people know Raj, that know Shaylee. You see that? So like, the, this is how the, it shows how you're connected to someone. And I think in the future, this would be a very big, big um, feature, but not when we start out. We are using the Neo4j database to do these, uh, you know, million calculations in a millisecond. It's using the Neo4j database, which we also need to update. Um, and then you can see, so we have track users. So I'm tracking Jane right here. So you can see on the map, she's stationary. So you can see how this looks. When she moves, it will show her moving in the direction of travel 
she's going and the speed of travel she's going on the map. You'll be able to see it in real time. Now let's say I want to go see like her history. So go to tracking, tracking history. I go to Jane and then I look and see, okay, this is Jane's trip today. She took two trips. And look at this is the time she left at 11:10 and 11:16 you can see this these are all the trip details look at all the trip details and it shows the speed all the different updates and it even shows like this is where the start and ending point was see that but the problem is is the starting point of this location was actually right where this blue dot is. But what happens is because Apple only allows you to show, it only lets tracking start after 500 feet, we need to then re-go back and say, where was this person idle? And then map that back to this user and guess at this, at this route, that they started from the bottom here and went all the way up. So we have to do that with all the trips. That has not been uh, that development has to be fixed, okay? Everyone does that. They just kind of look back at where they were idle and ma map it back to that, okay? So on every one of the trips, it starts out not in the right starting point. But you can see, you can go back um, up to 90 days. You can go back up to 90 days of route history. So we need to change this to only let it go back 90 days, okay? So not going back to August or anything. So, but you, it, it will record 90 days of route history for the user. And the other thing we have to do here is, so you can see on this map, let's see, I'll show you. When the user left, it did show, it is showing properly. We are using the snap to roads functionality. So in this case, it does show, it is actually working much better because it's showing the user going along the road of the map. You know, it's really doing that. Whereas sometimes it would go diagonally. So we may have to optimize based upon looking at trips. Um, and we have to also uh, modify this so that the times show up properly. So if somebody leaves at 11.30 p.m. and goes till, let's say, driving till 1 a.m., it's not showing that whole trip for that day. It needs to show the whole thing. Right now it's cutting off at 12 o'clock, which it should not do, okay? Um, and this is where you manage that. So if you wanna, you wanna track someone, you create a tracking request, you have to be connected to the user first. Then you can create a tracking request. So I can just do this. So here, if you're not connected to them, it asks you connect to them first, okay? But if I am connected to them, it allows me to um, tap and add a new address. And I can adjust this. So I can call this home. And now it tells me, okay, I want to track his arrival and departure notifications. You can do just one time, just departure, just arrival, or arrival and departure. So I send the tracking request. This key gets, Nikhil gets a push notification. Once he accepts it, it shows that it's accepted. This pending request is gone and then I will be able to track him. And every time he leaves and comes, it will notify me, okay? And then here's the groups functionality right here. So this will show all the people within the group. And it's basically a filtering mechanism. See, so it says 48 hours. This shows that Sammy's last update was over 48 hours ago. So we even have like one week, two week, one year, two year, so um, it's vital that we, um, um, you, you know, users know that this person is, has not updated a location in a while. Um, and you can see it shows that Sunil is on um, uh, travel mode. It really, it, it shouldn't show me in, on uh, airplane mode because I think I changed that. Let's see, let's go to the main menu. Uh, oh, I guess I am in air mode. So let me go into real time. Okay. There. Now, if you hard press on here, you can update. So 
See, for some reason, it's not changing. It still shows me in airplane mode. So that could be an issue. Um, let's see. I think that's pretty much how the app works. It's basically these are filters at the top, and then it just shows based on radar, map, and you can update all these views. It should update everything like this. I think this is another Sunil user. There's one. For some reason, there's two icons here, and I don't understand why. So maybe that's some complexity. But anyway, this is pretty much how this app works. So I hope, hope that gives a good explanation to you. Um, and you can you see we're also trying to update from Gmail and Microsoft and anywhere else where we can import users' connections where they can pass the phone number because everything is driven off the phone number um, for us to, to make connections with users. Um, so we have to see if that, you know, if you can import connections from here. See? And then we'll import anyone, any one of your connections in your email that have a phone number associated with it. And that will also be then listed in here as you, uh, as you uh, uh, import connections. Uh, so I think that's it. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.